morning, everyone, and happy new year. Oh my goodness. We are officially in 2021. My name is Winona. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I am also the leader of Busted Knuckles, the adult recovery ministry at Roadhouse Biker Church, one of the coolest churches in town. I'm telling you, we're in San Bernardino, California. And hey, this is exciting because we are a new month. So that means a new step. But what's even more exciting is we are starting over with our step studies because each month we address a new step. 12 steps, 12 months. We are in step one. And for, um, excuse me, my nose is itching. For a lot of us, we've gone through these steps a few times, but then there's some of you that are new to recovery and the step studies. And so I urge you to follow through with this. It, it's exciting. It, it, it is. It's an exciting time. And if you know someone that is just starting recovery or you think would benefit from hearing a message about recovery, let them know about these videos. Let them know about Busted Knuckles. We meet every Wednesday night, six or 6.30 at Roadhouse. Right now, because of the COVID issue, we're probably going to be doing some Zoom meetings. But all I say is just get a hold of me. Get a hold of me on Facebook. You can, you can private message me and, and I'll let you know what's happening. Um, I also do, I also post these videos on YouTube. So if you know someone that doesn't have Facebook, they're just not, you know, into Facebook, which is cool. Let them know that, that you can find these videos, these devotionals on YouTube under Busted Knuckles, Winona Flower. Um, and I post those every day on YouTube also. Um, but please let's share the good news that, that, there is there is a program available that's Christian based. Um, we we base our studies on scripture, and we incorporate the step studies, and we also incorporate the coolest the coolest thing. They are called the Road Trip to Recovery. Let me bring it a little bit closer, and you can see. These were written by Pastor Denver and myself, and basically. They still, they touch on the step studies, but it's just kind of bikered up a little bit, but no, it, it's, it's a, a different perspective on recovery. It's still very much based on the Bible because that's where we find our strength. And let me read this one. This is roadmap to recovery, roadmap number one. I hit the wall and knew I was totally out of control. And right at that moment, I admitted I was powerless over my addictions and my life had fallen apart. I needed God. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. You're going to find that in Matthew 5, 3. And then it says, I was totally out of control when I hit my wall. Now that wall that we're talking about, each of us, our wall is different. Um, Basically, that's rock bottom. You hit that wall. We go through life. We were going through life by the skin of our teeth, getting high, getting drunk, going gambling, doing our thing, thinking that we were impervious to everything, that we were indestructible. We would slam through these different walls, tr things that were put in our life that should have stopped us but didn't, and we slammed right through it. And so these walls, as we're slamming through these walls, we're leaving debris and junk and chaos and loss behind us. And we just keep going through without dealing with what we went through, through that wall. Well, there's going to come a point where we're going to find a wall that stops us. Bam! We can't go any further. That is our rock bottom. Your rock bottom, my rock bottom, completely different, but you have a wall. Maybe you haven't hit that wall yet. I know I hit mine, but maybe you haven't hit your wall yet. But it's when we hit that wall that we need to humble ourselves and admit that we're powerless. So that takes us to step one. It says that we admitted that we were powerless over our dependencies and our lives had become unmanageable. Now this, today's study, um, it's step one, day one, um, 
is out of the book of Mark, and it's Mark 10, 3 through 16. And it talks about coming to Christ like the little children. I'll read the scripture here in a minute. You know, um, but it says, let me just read a little bit. The, the study Bible, it always has such a good, good insight on this. It says, Jesus was often criticized for spending too much time with the wrong people. They considered children, tax collectors, and sinners, wrong people. Some, including the disciples, thought that Jesus, Jesus should be spending more time with important leaders and, and the devout because this was the way to improve his position and avoid all the criticism that the Pharisees were going to give him. But Jesus didn't need to improve his position. He was God, and he wanted to speak to those who needed him the most. Little children are helpless, and they depend on adults or their caregivers. They have to, dep they have to depend on others to take care of them. We're going to read all about this here. So I'm going to get started with a, a word of prayer, and then we'll jump right in. Um, it's a good one. They always are. <laughs> they always are. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father God. You got us through the year 2020. Some of us got some scabs and, and scars. Some are still going through it, Father God, but we are grateful that we have a new year and we have a whole new, a new step to go through, Father God, that you're going to point us to that road to recovery that you want us to be on, Father. So Lord, I lift up those that are working directly with these COVID patients. Father God, Put that hedge of protection around them, Father. They are the heroes, the frontline workers, Father God, in the nursing homes and in the emergency rooms and in the hospitals. They're working with these patients, putting their health on the line to care for others. They have empathy and they have feelings for these people and they know that these people need their help, just like Jesus knew the children needed him. So, Father, just bless them. Bless them, Father God, with your protection. And Lord, just blessings on those that are watching this video. I just pray that, that the scripture opens up someone's heart to you today, Father. In your son's name, amen. Yeah, those people are my heroes, man. I tell you, I got some friends that are right, right in the midst of it. And God bless them. God bless them. Okay, so we are in the book of Mark. It is Mark 10. It's verses... 13 through 16. And this is Jesus talking. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, it, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, my study Bible always has such good insight on this. It says here, adults are not as trusting as little children, obviously. To feel secure, all children look to a need a loving look and a gentle touch from someone who cares. All kids... They crave that, a, a loving touch and a gentle look, knowing that they're loved and they're needed and they're, or they're wanted is what it is. Complete intellectual understanding is not one of these requirements. They believe us if they trust us. Now, there are some kids that have been through hell on earth. Um, I have friends that have been through hell as children. Um, abuse, neglect. And so as kids, they learn early who to trust and who they can't. And so it's kind of like that street smarts that some of these kids develop. And if they don't trust you, a kid has that instinct. They're not going to, they're not going to believe what you tell them if they don't trust you. Jesus said that people should believe in him with this kind of childlike faith. We should not have to understand all the mysteries of the universe. It should be enough to know that God loves us and provides forgiveness for our sins. Okay. And then it goes on to say, like in, in verse 15, it says, Truly I tell you, anyone who, sh who will not receive the kingdom of God 
like a little child will never enter it. So it says here, how can you receive the kingdom of God like a little child? Adults consider the Christian faith for the first time will have life experiences that take them way past the ability to be as innocent as children. We've all got pasts. We've all got things that, that basically took those, that innocence of ours away. Whether we did it on our own or whether someone forcibly took it from us. We have these pasts. But Jesus did not, does not ask us to put aside our experiences, but he does require a change of attitude. Adult self-sufficiency must recognize its need for the sovereign God. Adult moral defenses, defensiveness must humble itself before the holy God. And the adult skeptical toughness must soften before the loving God. Some of us put on this facade that, you know, our, our skin toughens up because we've been battered around. And a lot of times it was self, it was brought on by what we chose to do. Now, again, Things might have happened in the past that, that made us choose this other path and, cho and, and made us toughen up so that we can handle the environment that's around us. But what this is saying is, is our toughness needs to soften so that we can humble ourselves to our loving God. Children do not feel supremely powerful, per perfectly righteous, or totally aut autonomous. These are adult fantasies. Coming to Jesus means to accept his goodness on your behalf, confess your need, and commit your life to his gentle, tender guidance. So, you know, we have, we have basically, it says this adult <laughs> fantasies. Um, we aren't perfect. We can't do it on our own. We're not righteous. We're not self-righteous. So we need to, we need to know that as it says in step one, we admitted our powerlessness over our dependencies and our lives had become un, unmanageable. And like it says here, I needed God. I needed God. That's what steps one is all about. We're admitting we need God. We need him. My life was totally out of control. You know, I was powerless over what was holding its power over me. These addictions, these, these, these feelings of, you know, like codependency and the, the enabling, you know, people are like, ah, it's just a, it's just words. No, it's a true thing that happens. We, we, we used substances or different activities to cover up our feeling of, of inadequacy. And it was a control issue with this codependency. You're trying to control everybody else's world because you can't control your own, but you know what's best for everybody else. Amen. Or you're enabling, you know, you, Unfortunately, myself, I lived with an alcoholic. I grew up with an alcoholic parents. Um, and you enabled, I enabled their actions to continue by just trying to justify it and what have you. So the, these are these things that we, as we're growing up, as we're maturing in our addiction, these are things that now we're needing to overcome. All right. So we use these addictions to cover up these feelings of inadequacy, these feelings of helplessness, of powerlessness. At that particular time, we were victims to our addictions. But now this powerlessness that we're giving over to is different. You're not going to be a victim. You're a child of God. You are not a victim any longer. So let me read our life recovery devotional. I love this. Step one, day one. It's a whole new year. It's a whole new month, a whole new step. And it says, like little children, 
For many of us in recovery, memories of childhood are memories of terrors associated with being powerless. If we were raised in families that were out of control, where we were neglected, abused, or exposed to domestic violence and family dysfunction, the thought of being powerless might be unreasonably fright frightening. We may have silently vowed never again to feel as vulnerable as we did when we were children. Jesus tells us that the first step into the kingdom of God is to become like a little child, and this involves becoming and being powerless. This involves being powerless. He said, I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And again, we're in Mark 10. In any society, children are the most dependent members. They have no inherent power for self-perfection or for self-protection, I'm sorry. No means to ensure that their lives will be safe, comfortable, or fulfilling. Little children are singularly reliant on the love, care, and nurture of others for their most basic needs. They must cry out, even though they may not know exactly what they need. They must trust their lives to someone who is more powerful than they are, and hopefully they will be heard and lovingly cared for. We too must dare to admit that we are truly powerless if our lives are to become healthy. This doesn't mean we have to become victims again. All right. We don't have to become victims again. It's a difference. We're, we, it, it's, it's a difference. Admitting our powerlessness is an honest appraisal of our situation in life and a positive step towards recovery. Discovering our powerlessness is the first step towards wholeness. So no longer are we the victim in this. Yes, we are powerless over our addictions and our compulsive behaviors. They took control of our lives. But we are taking that control back by saying, Jesus, Heavenly Father, I need you. I can't stop this, but you can help me. I can't do it alone. All right. I know I've been rambling on. I'm sorry. I'm excited. It's, it's a new year. It's a new step. We're getting started all over again. Recovery is 24 seven, 365, and we're in it for the long haul. And so here we are right at the beginning. All right. So, Hey, you guys have a great day. Happy new year to you. God bless.